Barakim Habarim, welcome to Messianic Moment Ministries. I'm Stephen Bruck. Hey, you know who you are. And today is the 18th day of October 2022. I took off a couple of weeks. Did anyone miss me? Anyway, I was reading Isaiah 29 the other day. And when I came to verses 13, 14... I had a bit of an epiphany suddenly seeing in those few sentences the true definition of what religion is. Now, as those of you who are regular subscribers, or dare I say members of my congregation, you know that I am totally against religion. God's instructions to us are a lifestyle and not just some set of activities you perform when you go to shul or church. In fact, God has no religion. Religion is the invention of people who want to have power over other people. Now Isaiah was a prophet to the southern kingdom of Judea, and he was trying to get them to return to God's way of life as they had corrupted themselves with the religions of the surrounding Semitic peoples. Before we go any further, let me clearly state this caveat. Pulling one or two sentences from the Bible is always a dangerous thing to do because it can lead to misunderstanding. Now, I believe in this case, I'm not misleading you or misinterpreting what God meant when he told Isaiah what to say. And I leave it up to you to judge for yourself whether or not I have. That being said, Let's see what God told Isaiah to tell the people. And this is from the complete Jewish Bible. Then Adonai said, Because these people approach me with empty words, and the honor they bestow on me is mere lip service, while in fact they have distanced their hearts from me, and their fear of me is just a mitzvah of human origin, therefore, I will have to keep shocking these people with astounding and amazing things until the wisdom of their wise ones vanishes and the discernment of their discerning ones is hidden away. To put this in words that reflect my understanding, God is saying that even though the people are going through the motions of proper worship, it's not something that they do because their hearts tell them to do it but rather because they've been told by men what they should do. And this opinion of mine seems to be confirmed because God says that their fear of him, which back then meant the form of worship, is just a mitzvah or a law of human origin. God is saying that the form of worship they were practicing was not from God, but from men. Now, isn't that exactly what religion is? a set of rules, a form of worship, fearing God by performing rites, rituals, and celebrating him with holidays that are all man-made? I mean, how many different religions do we have that all profess to worship the one God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God who is the father of the Messiah, who we believe to be Yeshua, the same God who never changes? If God never changes, then what he says he wants us to do never changes, which means that there should not be different forms of worship or different rules, different celebrations, or different days of rest. <laughs> Am I right? So through Isaiah, God is saying that when we practice a set of rules that are man-made, in other words, follow a specific religion, then he will show us just how wrong we are with shocking and amazing things to demonstrate to all that the wisdom of our wise people will vanish and their discernment will be hidden away, meaning there won't be any discernment. Have we seen any of this? Well, <clears throat> what about the revelation of child abuse in the Catholic Church? Well, what about the televangelist who embezzled from his congregation? Well, what about the televangelist who had been associating with prostitutes? Well, what about the New Jersey rabbi? 
who had an adulterous affair that led to murder. Well, what about, well, <clears throat> you get the point. And these people, as well as many others that we have heard about in the news, or <laughs> even worse, don't yet know about, all have one thing in common. They are worshipers of man-made religions. Yes, even Judaism, which should be the purest form of what God said he wanted us to do, has been corrupted by Talmudic requirements called halakha, which overruled and sometimes even replaced some of the instructions that God gave us, adding so much more to what God said we need to do. Which, you know, for the record, it's a sin based on Deuteronomy 4.2. So, no, what can we do about people who are so fully immersed in a religion that they discount everything I just said as so much tripe and nonsense? We can try to show them what God says, which, for the Jews, my people, means to get their head out of the Talmud, and for Christians, to get their head into the Torah. And if we can ever get the Jews out of the Talmud and back to the Torah, and get the Christians out of the New Covenant letters and into the Torah, the next step would be to teach them both the truth about who Yeshua is and what he really taught. And then, maybe, with God's help, we can teach all these different Judeo-Christian religion followers to fear the Lord the way the Lord said to fear him. That would be the fulfillment of God's new covenant given through Jeremiah 31, 31, which says that God's Torah will be written on our hearts. You know, but <clears throat> to be honest, I fear this will not be accomplished on a large level, and, and that's because I know what Yeshua said about salvation. It is the path less followed and the narrow gate that few people will go through. So I pray that if you are one who follows a religion, you will consider what God told Isaiah about the way he feels about religion and worship God starting today, the way God said he wants you to. Now look, you don't have to totally reject your religion. Just know which part is obeying what God said to do, which part is rejecting what God said to do, which part is man-made but not rejecting what God said to do and choose which part you will do. One last thing, I sincerely ask you to consider how God will feel about your choice. Well, thank you for being here. And please share these messages with everyone you know and subscribe to this ministry on my website. There's the subscribe button in the right-hand margin. And also here on my YouTube channel, click on the Messianic Moment icon. I think it's one of these two corners and subscribe here. I have a Facebook page, please like it, and a Facebook group that's called Just God's Word. And I invite you to join. Just please make sure you read and agree to the rules. And you know, if you like what you get here, you will also like my books, which you can get through my website or on Amazon. It's either in paperback or even in digital form. And remember, I always welcome your comments. Well, that's it for today. So, the heat throat and Baruch Hashem.